I want to talk about a problem when it comes to vibe coding and what I've seen in the industry over the last few years. You come onto Google, you type in VS Code, you open it up, you go to extensions, you install Augment AI, you get this thing come up here, then you open up the little Augment tab on the left, and I don't know if you know this, but if you're an Azure Cloud Engineer or an AWS Cloud Engineer, there's a lot of stuff that you can do with the Azure command line interface with the AZ PowerShell, right? You can run all sorts of different commands to give you more information about your kind of architecture. If you're trying to troubleshoot something or find a key vault or see what is connected to what, you can use the portal, but it's a lot faster if you run all these PowerShell commands. So I'll give you an example. Let's say I'm a cloud admin, sysadmin, and I just want to delete this virtual machine. I don't need this virtual machine anymore. So this is what I'm going to do. I open up the snipping tool. I take a screenshot of this. I do copy. And now I'm going to just paste the screenshot into here. I'm going to type in, I want to get as much information as possible about this VM. My next one is do not make any changes. Only use agent mode to run Azure commands to show and analyze information. And the reason why I use this specific prompt is I noticed when I used to use augment code when I first started uh, using it, I, I would kind of like read through everything that it would tell me to do. And, you know, I was kind of nervous with it. So I would always monitor what it's trying to do. And I started noticing that um, every time I do like, you know, show me about a storage account or show me some logs on something or, or show me how much uh, what the skew is on a certain resource. And it would what Augment AI would do was it would give me the information and then it would start writing all these commands that would give like advisory recommendations like, oh, I noticed like you don't have public IP enabled on this thing. I'm going to go ahead and enable that too. And it or like, you know, I noticed this firewall is blocking, isn't blocking enough ports. So let me go ahead and block more ports. And it would all be like hidden in the commands. And like me, I was analyzing it, but I started noticing that like the more you use AI, the more you skim over things and the more you start getting used to it. And so what I started doing was I specifically started writing it to my commands. Don't change anything do not change anything. And I make sure to like make that as a rule because I started noticing that a lot of other cloud engineers, like I wouldn't say majority, this is probably a minority, but I've noticed a lot of them do this. Like I've been a contractor. I've, I've seen a lot of different engineers at work and a lot of them start getting careless and they'll gloss over things. And what happens is after like a couple of weeks or after even a month, sometimes this stuff goes unnoticed and every single thing that they look at, they, it just changes a little bit. Like this one changed the, the network config on something. This one changed the security policy and little by little things start changing and then things start breaking. And then by the time something is like seriously broken, there's been so many changes and we have no idea what's been changed because there's no paper trail of this stuff happening. And a lot of people just assign themselves the global admin privileges in Azure where they can just do whatever they want. So it's, it's really important when you're using AI that you're using something called PIM. So that's privileged identity management. You might have seen this before. It's like, you know, natively, I have a reader role. I can read everything in the tenant, but whenever I want to do something sysadmin related, let's say I want to edit a logic app, then I'll just put in, I'll request a logic app contributor role for like an hour and then I'll go do that task. Or if I, you know, whatever I'm trying to do, I'll go enable that role just for like an hour or half an hour, however long I need to deploy that one thing. And while I'm not doing something by default, natively, I am running just reader role. I'm making sure I can't do anything. So that's another, that's a guardrail, right? It's 
It's a guardrail in case I do type in do not change anything, but the AI changes stuff anyways. Like you don't know, it might be doing it. I don't know, we gloss over this stuff a lot. I know like when I get a whole bunch of stuff on my plate, I'm not reading and analyzing everything that AI is doing. So a lot of times I even gloss over it. So I make sure that, you know, I don't give myself any permissions or privileges for me to be authenticated to do anything. So I won't be able to break anything or change stuff. So here's another thing you could do to circumvent this. So you can go under the options, click on settings and go under rules and user guidelines. And here you can create rule file or you can share your rules or if, if a coworker gives you their rules, you can import their rules. And here you can basically do not change anything unless I explicitly tell you to. But um, yeah, it's up to you if you want to use this or how you want to use this, but it could be great guardrails to make sure that going forward, if you do tend to be the type of person who glosses over things like really easily and you tend to miss stuff and you're a bit more careless, this is probably a great option for you to use. Anyways, I just wanted to point that out because uh, that you can do a lot of damage. You can wreak havoc on an architecture if you're just carelessly cloud engineering like this. But on the bright side, check this out. So this is my prompt. And if you are using Augment AI, there's a button called Enhance Prompt where it takes your prompt, your lazy written human prompt, and it enhances it into something that is more digestible and more accurate and a better way to word and format the specifics of what you want the AI agent to do. So you can go over with a comb and be like, okay, well, yeah, I want the name, the resource group, the location, the size, and the OS. And I want the status, I want the network configuration, I want the disk, I want all this information, all right? So I'm gonna hit play. So this is gonna send to my agent and it's gonna open up this terminal in the bottom. And here's where it starts doing it, right? This is where you gotta approve each command. So I, I try to at least somewhat read at each thing. Like I notice in the AI world, it's easy to get like, I don't know what to call it. I don't know if there's a word for it yet. I, for me, it's like brain slop. It's like when you're using AI all day long and it's like just powering through shit and you're getting a lot of stuff done really fast, it's easy for your brain to just kind of get into this weird fog mode where you kind of go into an autopilot where you're not critically thinking anymore. And it, I, I almost think it's like bad for my brain and just people's brains in general. So I try to tone it down because I, I catch myself doing this sometimes. So I, at least just like, yeah, if you want to, in this window down here, you got to click on augment to see what it's actually doing. So um, yeah, you can see AZ is not recognized. This is just like a personal laptop of mine that I probably don't have this stuff installed. So if, in the meantime, I'm going to interrupt it. So I'm just going to tell it to install any components that it needs. So you can see like back in the day, I would have to like go ahead and troubleshoot this myself. You know, I would have to copy paste errors into Google, look through Stack Overflow. Maybe I would go out and even buy a textbook on like the technology and read through like the proper setup of everything. And, and nowadays you just, you just keep pressing the blue button until it works. Like you don't have to, you don't have to think about shit anymore. You don't have to, you don't have to go through the thought process. Like back in the day, I had to go through like memorizing the OSI model. I had to memorize like so many different things in order to get my brain thinking structured in a way where when a problem comes up, I can think about it and go through the steps and pro like, we don't have to do that anymore. We just keep pressing the blue button until it fixes it. And here it's getting an error with the subscription. Um, so, you know, I just screenshot the subscription and post it in there. And here you go. Here it's showing us all of the, all the information that I'm looking for, right? Showing me, but it's all in JSON. So I'm going to do something, put all the information in a file and make an HTML dashboard. So now I'm just going to do like, you know, put all the information in a file 
and then make an HTML dashboard for quick visual info. And then as a safeguard, don't change anything in the Azure environment. And now, you know, I just press the blue button until it's done. All right, now it's getting the VNet information. And here you have it. Here I have a whole dashboard. So like if a manager comes to me and he's like, uh, like what's the VM ID of all of our Linux servers? Or like, what's the IP address? Of, and if he wants like a whole bunch of information on it, you could just do this report in like, well, what was that? Like two, three minutes. Now you have a whole report dashboard. You could showcase it to him and you're like, okay, hey, here's all the stuff. Um, and like, what do you want me to do with it? You know? So like, like back in the day, I would have had to like create reports on like Microsoft word or like, you, you know, like this, this stuff. And then I, I would have had to go through like all of the information on the VM. Like I would have to go in and check it out. I would go look at the throughput and that stuff. But this just populated everything in like, just like a few minutes. And I could do this on like, thousands of vms and different resources all at the same time in a single prompt and i can create all these different i could all these different pages in the same html file create all these dashboards where you can navigate and search and it's like you know this stuff used to take you so long to figure out so um anyways since i showed you guys my environment i only have like one resource in my whole environment I'm going to go ahead and do use AZ. I'm just going to type in use AZ commands with agent mode to delete everything in my environment. I don't care about anything in my portal. It's just a quick little lab setup that I have on my account. So here it shows all of my resources. I got my network interface, VM, my IP address, disks, public keys, security groups. This is all just stuff that's just kind of assigned to the virtual machine. And I'm going to purge everything. So here you have it, everything is deleted. So the key takeaway from this video is be smart with vibe coding. I know it's like when you use it every day to complete a lot of different tasks, it, it becomes this like brain dead kind of work and you notice like, yeah, I could do this manually, but I know how to do, use vibe coding to get the information really fast. And what ends up happening is like, you don't really have to think about it anymore. You just type out what you want. And after a while, you get really good at typing out what you want. And you end up finishing tasks in like, like I remember just collecting logs or just even just getting error information from certain devices or from AKS clusters or data factory pipelines or Azure DevOps, like CICD um, build problems, like build release issues with the artifacts, like all the stuff I would have to like go and look at the error messages, read through everything. Now I just type in these, these, uh, prompts and augment AI to use the AZ commands and agent mode. And it collects like everything I want it to. I don't have to remember the commands anymore. I don't have to. And it, it's almost like if you do this every single day for years, it's like, you're indirectly teaching your brain almost to like stop thinking. And it's important that you don't let that happen. And you got to stay on top of it because if you start slipping up and you don't notice, then AI can very easily wreak complete havoc on the architecture. Like I said, I, I, I personally know and have seen a lot of engineers in cloud and DevOps who will, who will do this and they will just, without even knowing, they'll start changing stuff. Like next thing I know, there's public IP addresses enabled on virtual machines that should be in their own isolated VNets without VMs. Or, you know, we have a connection string to certain storage accounts and SQL databases ensuring their security. Next thing I know, there's a public IP assigned to it. Like, just things that we sh that shouldn't be in the design of the architecture, but augment AI does not see your whole architecture and it's just going to like 
start randomly configuring everything just to kind of suit the certain task that it's doing at the moment. Like every time you put in a prompt, it tries to get that prompt done. And in that moment, if it needs it to have a public IP, it's just gonna assign it what it's gonna configure all types of resources just to fit its current prompt to for it to get completed in that moment. And that can, it's dangerous. Like there, like companies get hacked over stuff like this. We get outages over stuff like, like companies can lose a billion dollars. You can destroy your whole company if you, if you have an engineering team that does this. And that's, that's pretty scary. So yeah, use PIM. You, privileged identity management. Use that shit. Make sure that you're only giving yourself like 30 minutes to an hour max of time. Like, you know, there's no point of using PIM. If you sign in in the morning, you give yourself eight hours and that's it. Then it's useless. Like I see people doing that. It's useless because then you might as well not have PIM as a feature. The whole point of PIM is for us to be able to vibe code all day and run all these commands and be comfortable knowing that I only have read-only permissions, that I can't actually do anything, that I have to, if I wanna do something, I gotta give myself a 30 minute window to do that thing. And then when it's done, I, I make sure I don't do anything that's risky for the rest of that time. Maybe I'll analyze something or maybe I'll turn it off and keep doing risky things. So yeah, be smart. Be smart, keep using your brain, make sure your brain doesn't get lazy and foggy from AI. I know it happens. So it's important that we we maybe pick up some hobbies, maybe do some studying, play some chess, play some factorio, or just, you know, try, try to keep thinking, keep using your brain, because if you don't, I mean, I can see the effects even after a few weeks of vibe coding. So I... And it's only been around for a few years. So I can only imagine what it would be like if you vibe coded every day for like the next 40 years of your life. And you just don't think for like 40, you let it, you, you just keep pressing the blue button and you don't think about anything and it makes all the problems go away. You don't know, you don't even really know what it's doing anymore. It's like, um... I'm getting into speculative sci-fi now. This is my last little rant, and then it's going to be the end of the video. My last little, little sci-fi rant is like, you know, in the future, once technology gets to a certain level, like, humans don't even know what it's doing anymore. It's just, it's it's transcended, like, human intelligence. It's, it's like, it's on its own level. It's doing its thing. We can't stop it anymore. And it's... And we we don't even know how it works anymore. And it's just like, uh, I feel like we're kind of at the beginning of that. And it's kind of already happening in a small scale. But um, yeah, we're still, we, we are still a generation where we, we can still comprehend and grasp this and work with it. So it's important for us to be vigilant and be smart. Don't, don't do something. Don't get fired. Okay. Don't get fired. Don't get a lawsuit on your hands. The last thing you want is to be vibe coding and to press the wrong blue button and for your company to lose like millions of dollars. It's a it's an easy thing, easy mistake, and it's a rookie mistake. And it's it it seems like it's really easy to make that mistake. Um so that's all I wanted to talk about. Thanks for watching.